Hello everyone. <laughs> hey, my name's Kurt. I'm a dad who draws, and this is our Monday edition of the of Monday afternoon live. <laughs> I almost I almost said uh, the daily draw. How is everyone doing today? We are uh, in the middle of just this. We have this great lighthouse that we're going to draw as a landscape. If you are brand new to the ch channel and first live draw, I just wanted to say hello and welcome. I'm glad that you're here. We do have a very robust, a very active Facebook group and the link is down below. You can uh, join us there and uh, a lot. We post a lot of work there. You can get the updates of everything that's going on with um, A Dad Who Draws and um, all the classes and support. It's all right there in our Facebook group. But uh, let's get right into it. If uh, I am monitoring, mont, mont, moderating the chat, so if you uh, have a question, we could do that. We have some neat things that we're gonna look at today in this lighthouse. So with that being said, Let's do this, right? Okay. <laughs> and I see that uh, really call out a couple people who are here. We got Darlene and John, Linda. Uh, Darlene has to leave shortly. And who did I miss here, John? Yeah, we got two Johns in the house. So there you have it, all right? Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this uh, lighthouse. Uh, Immediately off of the, um, right from the get-go, we have a lot of layering going on in that we have some great foreground things, that being the rock. The middle ground is going to be the lighthouse and then the background is going to be some clouds. So we'll talk about clouds today We uh, and then uh, rocks. Very similar approach, but uh, I think we will get a lot out of it. So. Whenever I draw, I always uh, divide my drawing up into three parts. I always think of uh, a gesture, construction, and then detail. All right, gesture usually gets the, oh, did I just, I knew it. <clears throat> gesture will get uh, the, kind of the, if, if it's something has life, it's gonna kind of get the action, an action line per se. If it's stagnant, kind of like this in a way, we're gonna quickly use it to kind of map out where we're gonna put things. Then we use that almost to springboard into construction where we start like actually creating 3D forms and stuff. And then the last thing we will do is look into detail. Detailing the texture and the rock, the texture in the water and the fluffiness of the clouds. All right. We also usually will add at that moment um, the val certain values to get certain pieces to jump out at us. But let's get into this right away. Uh, and let me, I put my notes on the wrong layer here. So let me just uh, remove those and we'll just talk you through them. Okay. So with something like this, I always like to start off with some type of framework of my drawing. This this helps me to uh, use proportion and measurement in order to get things all uh, lined up here. And happy Monday, Darlene. Yes, it has been. It is going to be a roller coaster Monday. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> all right. So we got, a, we got our uh, framework in. Oh, and by the way, if I happen to go just a little, if I go fast, I, I'm aware of it, but uh, I can't see where you're at in your drawing. So if, if I happen to go too fast and you want me to slow down or repeat something, by all means, just jump in there and ask me to repeat it. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and I would start off with getting this horizon line where this, uh, this water is. And let me let me point out. I want to point out two uh, two things to uh, to show you on this drawing. So just pause for a second. Pause for a second because this is important. I want to talk about composition real fast, and it won't take long, but it's it's worth the conversation. So, if you ever heard of the term the rule of thirds, the rule of thirds is a great resource to you. So, essentially, if you have a page and you divide it into thirds this way, and then you divide it into thirds this way, 
you want to make sure in a sense that the interesting stuff is going to happen anywhere on these on these little points these cross sections for example uh in our example here the uh the uh the light the lighthouse <laughs> i kept wanting to say the light tower the lighthouse is on the third side so it makes it far more dramatic uh, you know you have a lot of this stone stru structure is toward the bottom of of this so these are all the things that make this composition look really well and so when you are drawing there is a temptation really quickly to put your drawing dead center but if if you have if you have uh think of the rule of thirds you know you might throw your house right over here you see that and then over here you might have a a tree that comes over here you see that makes a really dramatic a really dramatic uh drawing there and then of course you got the clouds coming in if you have something like this you know you can have uh you might have like uh cliffs right here and then a seashore down here but over here you might have some very dramatic dramatic clouds so that's the rule of thirds so just put that Put that in the back of your mind there and uh, just remember that when next time you are doing a composition. All right, so we, ha we have our uh, water here and let's just drop a straight center line to kind of position that lighthouse, okay? And then we're just gonna quickly gesture in like this, this foreground rock and I'm I'm using a lot of straight, <clears throat> straight and curve. So let's let's get a nice position in of this stone foundation. So here's here's something that you might want to use. Put this in the back of your mind. When we're working with pro proportion, that means we're measuring things. And there are uh, four different rules or four different tools that I like to use in order to make sure my proportion is correct. Um, number three on that list, and I'll talk about the other two in a second, is negative space. So let me, let me show you what I mean by that. All right. So if I'm going to draw the foundation of this uh, lighthouse, I might this negative shape here you see this that is a great shape in order to try and match right let's do that let's try and match that shape right now so if i come down here and i'm only looking at that shape very lightly i want to put it in okay Let's jump to the other side and try and get that get the other negative shape. It's almost it's like a a little bit of an angle, and I could already tell you that. Uh, let's see, I got to go a little bit wider here on mine. Something like that, you see. So there, there is the uh, the rough shape of the of the tower. And I can just kind of, there's the top part, there's the top of the foundation, right? Now this, my center line seems to be a little bit off, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to shove it over just a slight, slight bit there. And, oh, look at this. Now I'm constantly, I'm constantly, constantly looking for shapes, shapes that I see that will help me um, work out the details. So here's a great shape, look at this. This is almost, I mean, that, that's almost a square right there. You see that? Let's kind of roughly put that in. That's going to be about a square, so we're like this. Okay. Yep, this is all part of gesture stuff. We're just getting these pieces in place.
right? That's this is a more of a look at the next section there. That's a bit of a of of a rectangle. You see this? Look at this. This is almost like a rectangle there. So we can put that one in as well. And then we got another little rectangle on top here. We can add that. A little bit of a dome, and there we have it. I think I think I may have made that one a little too too long there. So I'm gonna just move. I'm not gonna erase it. I'm just gonna move it all down for right now. And, <clears throat> oh, and while we're at it, if you please, uh, before you, before we finish at some point, I would really appreciate a, a comment of some sort. That's always, that's always a big help or a, uh, uh, yeah, if you're not even subscribed, definitely subscribe to the channel. Then you can be alerted every time we do one of these. All right, let's let's kind of go in now and and just kind of rough out the edge or what I like to call the containment line of the edge of this cloud over here. So I'm just I'm just looking at the negative space again. It's it's easier for me to see this. And let me let me show you like this. This is my negative that's my negative shape. You see that? So let's see if we can pull that off there. Now, this is interesting. Look at now this brings up another rule of 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 measurement. I'm going to show it to you right here. So I also use I also like to use horizontal and vertical lines and see what things line up horizontally and what things line up vertically. So, for example, the the top let me brighten that up just a bit. The top of this square here, all right, this is kind of like, oh, look, that, that's kind of lining up with the thickness, you know, where that, where that cloud comes out. And then I could run a vertical line. Look at this. And I'm just doing this in my head. You know, these, these two kind of match up. The, the tip of this cloud to the tip of that cloud, you see? So let's, let's make some of those adjustments. So let's see if I, the top of this here, okay, and then, all right, and this is going to come in bound like that. We'll, we'll come back in and, and clean that edge up in just a second. Okay, let's get this other cloud in here, and I'm just kind of quickly roughing in the shape, and it, this comes down to, let's see. Get all these containment lines down. And that right there is going to bring us to the end of our gesture. So we've we've gotten our gesture in place. We've we've already kind of moved into the construction phase because we're we're using vertical and horizontal lines to get our proportion. I drew three thumbnails, blue the and then I had the square mark. All right. Uh, well, you know, I'll tell you what, John. That's not a bad. That's not a bad approach at all to bang out a bunch of little teeny thumbnails to give you. Uh, John had said, "I drew three th thumbnails and blew the proportions three times." So, uh, you know, part of it is the more that you draw something, the more you l are looking at a subject, the more familiar you're going to get with it. So. All right, let's continue on here. I'm going to go ahead and erase uh, these these elements here, so now we can start to work out some of the details of our drawing. All right, 
Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna lay in some value. Before I start doing the details, uh, I don't like to work always on a white piece of paper. I like to have some value put in. So you could just use the side of your pencil and just try and create a very even value. Not too dark, because we'll come back in and make it darker. But, but if I look, if I squint my eyes and look at this picture here, all right, right away, you know, the, this side, this whole side of the lighthouse is gonna have a bit of a value and it's it's going to get darker, but for us right now, we're just going to put something in, just something like that. That's gonna help. Uh, and then if I look closely now, the value of the ocean is actually darker than the value of, of these rocks right here. You see that? So let's just continue bringing this down here There's that, and, and I'm gonna add that same value to the rocks here. So we have a first pass that we've added a similar value to all these areas, okay? Let's add a second value, and this is gonna, this is gonna darken the ocean just a little bit. When we come back with detail, it's going to, this is gonna really help, help read the different, uh, the different depths. And now if I squint my eye even more, I can see that this, this, this area is darker than the ocean. So let's just drop in a darker tone here for value. Okay, so I've got I've got three tones that are coming in here. It's always nice to have three tones. I'm gonna get some coffee. I'll be right back. Let's go ahead and, and move into more detail now. Do uh, you guys want to? I'll give you another minute. Give you another minute here to kind of get warmed up. Get you get caught up if you need to. If I take off my reading glasses, the value really pops out, but then I cannot draw because of my glasses. I'm so sorry, Linda. <laughs> you might have you might have discovered a new style. <laughs> oh man. Alright. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Let's start off with this rock down below here. Now, same approach that we did, we just we, what we just did on the bigger picture, we're going to macro it, all right? So if I look at this rock formation here, let me just start to break it down a little bit. So let's see here if I can. And, it, and the nice thing is, because we're dealing, dealing with rocks, we could get away with a lot, all right? So I have this kind of shape and I'm just kind of gonna pencil it in here. Let's see, it's gonna come here. Look at that, I, I kind of drew that not quite like the picture at all, didn't I? Well, that happens, but that's okay. It's just rocks. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of break this down here. Look, there's this there's this shape like this. Okay? So when we're dealing with rocks, let me, let's just say, uh, let's say this is a rock over here, okay? That's a containment line, all right? What I like to think of a rock is almost like facets. So if 
you know, it, it, you could do something like this, almost like a letter Y on the inside of that rock. And so that right there has given this rock edges. So, you know, one side, if you, if you came in with a single tone and colored two, two sides and then came back in again and just did the one, boom, you've, you, you've just created a real nice looking rock there. You see that? Then you could push in, come in with your pencil and thick and thin push down and pull up, push down, pull up. And, and this is going to give your rock a lot of hard edge and structure. Let's do that down here in these guys. So let's see, here's this edge here and it's, there's a nice shadow going here, right? Usually, here's one other thing with the rock is, let me zoom into this line here. I want to I wanna show something to you. If, if this edge right there is dark because, because of a crack, uh, usually the edge, I want to kind of tone down some of the rest of this here, you see? By getting that little bit of light going on right there, uh, that really creates an edge of a rock. Now, look at our example of our picture, and you can see that. You see how that edge is light next to the dark there? You see that? Okay, I'm just kind of going through and I like to add some, sometimes some speckles to get that texture. Pushing down, pulling up. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the to the base of this of this tower here, and I'm just going to use like small straight lines and just kind of walk my way down the edge of where that uh, um, rock rocks are right come back up the other side now this is not the top of this isn't this is has a little bit of a uh, curve to it Okay, and then same thing, same thing what we just did. Let's do it for this rock that surrounds this uh, lighthouse here. So let's see, this thing kind of breaks down like this. You see this? And it comes up over here, and then this goes all the way down into the water. going to get some nice contrast here with the rock in the back and the one forward so I definitely want to uh, add some dark value right there you see look at that that rock this one where I'm at right now it has a nice white edge so I want to I want to bring that out, not by erasing per se, but darkening everything around it. Just 
just kind of, when I say use surface lines, I mean like using the texture, feeling almost like little ants were walking along the surface of something. Trying to group, group values together. <clears throat> you know, drawing, drawing like this is so important because one is, is when you get into paint, now you have a whole nother element to deal with and that being color. And if, if you don't get your values right, uh, you could have the most perfect color in the world, but it's all going to fall apart. Value, value, I believe, trumps, trumps color any time, every time. just working these rocks here just a bit see it's nice I, I do like to drop my value earlier on in the process because then it, it just helps helps see the whole thing happening in front of you as opposed to if when you do value <laughs> when you do when you do value uh, it uh, it 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 makes everything start to look round and have form to it thank you Linda you said you make it look so easy I'm fascinated well <clears throat> you know that that comes with time and you can get there too it just takes time Here's, here's a little something, I'll, I'll show it. Uh, let me just kind of take him away for a second. And, and this, is a good, this is a good little trick, not a trick, but let me just kind of show you this idea. And this is using uh, overlap, overlap like a letter Y. So let's, let's say if I had like a, a square here, and you, you could probably put this on your page, because this happens all the time, especially with clothing. And I've just used it here, and I'm going to show. I'm going to show you what I did. Come in here and, and just add a line like this, okay? Add a line like that. Then, right here, grab, grab come up here like this, coming down like this. You see that? This, this then, what this says is you have this A form is wrapping around going toward the back of this B form. You see that? <clears throat> Same thing if you could even do it like this. If this was a, a curve here, and then you come around like this. You see that? This is a very common... This should. This is like key. You should be able to memorize that concept, the, those lines. Um, doing that because it, it shows up all the time and when you start doing it very subtly uh, no one will notice but it really makes your drawing look good so just just remember that <clears throat> and if I move this up here oops all right let's continue on <clears throat> all right let's go ahead and we let's move up to the top of this I want to save some time to talk about clouds here. All right, let's get in here like this, throw this in here. I'm 
Now I'm just I'm just gonna drop in some of these little squares here. These are the different windows and so these are kind of random a little bit, so I could get away with that, but look at that. Look at the look at the windows going up the base of the of the tower there. So that's that's something we have to be a little bit more careful of. So um, whenever you're going to draw something and you need something evenly out, uh, the best way to do that is let's just say let's just say you had a line here. You want to always go in halves. So let's just say we make a mark there, come down here like this, and to even it out, I might draw another mark dead center. It's easy to see the center of something. Then I could go center again center again and then center again and look at that I've divided this line up in all those equal pieces well these windows are no difference okay so let's let's run just kind of a little a little line along the side here that's gonna be our guide and let's just drop in a top window there okay come all the way down to the bottom and drop another window in, just like that. I'll zoom in a little bit. Let's find the halfway point. And we're not going to even look at the picture because no one's ever going to see the picture. The, the only thing that they're going to see is, is our drawing. And let's divide that into half. So there you go. There are some nice, even, even windows. And we have, I, I might get, I might be able to add one more. Oops. And then it looks like we got some darker the the darker the lighthouse part is up on top I don't know what they call that and then we got some more spaced out windows so let's do it again on the side here you see that I'm gonna just put one on the side divide that in half and divide that in half How's my speed doing? Am I going too fast? Everyone okay with that? So let's let's squint our eyes and look at our picture here now. And now I'm I'm only looking at the lighthouse and the and the base that it's standing on, okay? And I want you to ask yourself where on this on this whole lighthouse here and the rock base, where is the brightest white? Where is the where is the brightest white? That's right. That's right, Linda. I heard you. I heard what you said. You said on the on the center tower there. That's right. See, you're one of my better students. <laughs> Unlike that John S. Talk. John, John S. Talk, man. No one likes to be a problem like him. <laughs> All right. Then you get your brown, then you get the brown area, right? So this we want to add a slight tone in. So we want to make sure that on our page, the brightest white is where the white's supposed to be and we don't compete with it with other tones. You see? <clears throat> value, value we talk about so much about drawing the actual construction pyramid it's not it's what that's officially called what that's officially called the, the candle area or whatever
Oh, what happened there? Are we still on a little bit? Oh, look at that. There's some delay. Hold on. Yeah, give it give it a second. Let's see if it cleans up on itself. All right, see, look at that. It looks like it's doing a little bit better there. All right, there we go. I think we're back up here. I'll give it a, give it a minute here. Yep, coffee time is right. Hey, there we go. Okay, I'm going to continue on now. I think we're I think we're good. So, <clears throat> uh, let's bring some texture in here. You can see there's some bricks going, and this is like this this lighthouse is slightly crumbling here, right? So let's just add a little bit of, of texture. And then, oh, look at this. This was interesting. I, I See, here's the thing about art that's when you're drawing something. Um, you you don't notice things right away. And then, and then as you look at something closer, things start to pop out. For example, look at the base. The base of this lighthouse right here. As soon as I draw it look how dark there's this really dark shape here you see that and then and then it's like a darker value over here once it turns the corner look at this I there's a, a brick or something so we want to get that the underside of that brick right there you see And then it looks like there's like some railing or some objects that are up here, right? Okay, let's let's work on the left side here and get this nice sharp edge coming down, okay? Looks like there's a line going down the center like this. And then a stripe almost right down the center here, like something like this. So much of drawing is just 
seen. I'm going to move up to the top here and really I look at this highlight. Look at this highlight going on over here. Look at look at this highlight over here. You see that? Sound is off. Now I think I'm okay on my end. Oh, it's sound is off and on. All right. I think we're doing okay right now. Let me know if it... <clears throat> falls off again, okay? <clears throat> okay, let's continue on. So I'm gonna really darken, darken this, this side of that lighthouse there. And then the same thing, I'm gonna really darken the left side there. Just kind of adding where our panes of glass are going to go up here. <clears throat> okay, so we've, we've got some great textures going. We've got a little bit of the smoothness of the lighthouse. We've got the, uh, the rocks and the texture. Let's jump into the water and and all I'm gonna do is just kind of use these scallops like this. And I'm gonna like blur my eyes and look closely at the water and, and try and determine where, where the darks are. So like I see a band, let me show you where I see this here. Like I see a band of darker water right along in here, you see that? And then another band of darker water down here. So when I go to add value, I want to be mindful of that. So I'm just going to add some scallops here. And then I'm going to do another grouping down here. Maybe pushed as it comes closer to the edge of the frame or toward the bottom. I'm going to push down my pencil just a little bit more, get a little more pressure. This will give the, the sense that these waves are, are closer to me. And I'm also making the use just a little bit more deeper than as they fade toward the back. Uh, they're... Let's go ahead and get up here. Let's talk about clouds here in the next five minutes. So um, I'm going to get rid of my picture here for a second. And when it comes to clouds, you know, you're, you're grouping, you are trying to distinguish different shapes and different sizes of things. So groupings is what, what you're, you're looking for these groupings. So let me show you this idea. I want you to think of father mother, 
brother, sister, baby. All right. I want you to think of that. So if we were going to work with a bunch of rocks, we might say one rock is going to be the father rock, right? And that's going to be big. And then, then we're going to get into the mother rock and maybe she's a little bit smaller than dad and she's maybe like this, right? Then we then we got brother rock and he he's going to be like this maybe and maybe he has another brother and that brother is going to be like that. Um that's a good question. Then you're going to have baby rock down here. It's going to be a little bit smaller. <clears throat> Linda, if you can't hear, I'll post I'll repost this video when we're done so that you can uh, hear it because it's recording it it's recording the voice on my end but um, it may not be uploaded for whatever reason okay so um, just DM me in our Facebook group when we're done and let's let's see how that works okay I'll check the recording too when we're finished as well all right so we you have these different shapes of rocks uh, you know this is the uh, we get a variation of size by following this this formula in a sense okay same thing goes with clouds so let me let me bring our picture up here and let's look at the clouds here so you might you might end up having this uh, idea of uh, father nice big a nice big round and then mother might be a little bit smaller than that and then you have brother brother sister baby and then father again maybe mother brother you see this this formula will help you get variation that's that's really what you're looking for All right now I'm looking back at the clouds as a whole here and I I want to break these down a little bit you got this in here got this going okay well it's coming in here a little bit right And then the last thing what you want to do is then you're going to come back in with value again. So look at the clouds on the left side here. They all have a common value. So let's just drop in an even tone across all of them. And then of course on the right side we you might have something like this. There's some definitely whiter clouds there, so we we don't want to put that tone in there, right? And then you have your sky that is a darker tone than these clouds. The clear blue sky in the background. I have my containment line around the clouds. I have some value in the clouds. And now I'm going to start to build those up using textures. But I'm thinking of when I'm drawing clouds now, I'm thinking of shaving cream. I'm thinking of 
using shaving cream and layering it on top of each other. So, you know, you're if I'm looking at this cloud here, you know, you might you might have this going on. You know. And I'm only putting these surface lines where there's shadow. sharp edge there now here's a little situ situation where this rock forward rock is almost the same value as the clouds right behind it well I'm going to make the decision and, and put some tone on those rocks because I don't want them to be, I don't want them to compete with those clouds behind there, you see? Linda, how's that sound working now for you? Is it, is it better? There it is. I think that's going to do it for today. <clears throat> now, one last thing I might do, and, and if I was to, since I am working digitally, I could do this. If I was, if I was working traditionally and you had an eraser, you might soften the background just a little bit. All right? Because that's going, if you soften it or lighten it, it's going to throw it back into space because I, I look at the edge that I've created on some of these clouds and it's too sharp. It's way too sharp. So um, it brings out more contrast and it competes with my, with my uh, uh, lighthouse there. So uh, that's, that's one thing you could do. All right. Well, hey, we're going to end it with that. My name is Kurt. I'm a dad who draws. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, for the day. Um, feel free to post your work into our Facebook group, and we will uh, take a look at that. Tag me in it, and if I see a problem, I'll try and help you out there. All right? Hey, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, go out there. Make your day great, right? <laughs> okay, bye-bye. <laughs>